<laughs> there, there, okay. <laughs> Just tell us when you're ready, Heather. Okay, pretty soon I'm I'm admitting people into okay. Zoom session. Okay, and I'm saying, okay, so we have about 18 people. If y'all can hear me, yeah. Give a thumbs up, uh, wave your hands or anything like that. That's awesome. So my my name is I'm the this guy, like always. I, hey, hi Sonia. I am the communications chair for the Tarrant County Democratic Party. Some really quick housekeeping uh, stuff right now. Um, you know, we're we're glad that we have guests on with us with the Tarrant County Democratic Party. Um, a few things to note: if if anybody has a question for the senator, you can put it into the chat because we are going to mute um, most of the participants so that um, our moderator Leah Dean, you know, can ask questions and we can hear from the senator. Um, you can also send me an email if you need to at info at tarrantdemocrats.org. So if you have a question or uh, technical difficulties, I can definitely help you with that. Um, other than that, I'm, I'm proud to introduce um, our county chair, Deborah Peoples. She will give us a quick intro and um, some housekeeping items uh, with the county party itself. Um, so Deborah, if you don't mind, uh, please feel free to take it away. Oh, thank you very much. And good afternoon. Thank you all for joining. Dr. Mo, I see you. Sonia, I see you. Caroline, I see you. Welcome to campaigning in the age of uh, the coronavirus. And um, we believe that our, we still have a duty to get you the information, to introduce you to our candidates. And we are delighted today to have an extraordinary candidate, um, Senator Royce West. But also, I would like to introduce our moderator for today. And so I think if you'll look up there, you'll see Leah Dean and this beautiful poodle in the camera with her. Uh, Leah likes to be known as the millennial dog mom, <laughs> and she believes everyone should have uh, safe access to abortion services. She has been very active with Planned Parenthood, but she came to us from Midland, Texas in 2014, and she quickly plugged into Tarrant County, and I am forever grateful. Uh, she serves as a precinct chair. She served as vice president of the Texas Democratic Women's Association. She served as president of the Tarrant County Democratic Women's uh, Club, just to name a few. She's an extraordinary volunteer who uh, can be counted on to do anything. And so, Leah, I want to thank you for agreeing to moderate this today. You and your baby, your first. And uh, let me just tell talk this, about this for a minute, because for those of uh, you who live in Dallas, or for those who live in Dallas, you think that Senator West belongs to you. <laughs> Senator West belongs to all of us. He is an extraordinary leader. And for those of you who did not know, Senator West was actually a student at UTA in Arlington, Texas, in Tarrant County. Uh, he served as student body president there was absolutely amazing and I think you all know the West the rest is history of his storied rise but he is not just a senator for Senate District 33 uh, in Dallas he is a senator for all of us and has fought for issues for all of us all over Texas and so it gives me great joy and a great deal of pleasure to introduce Senator Royce West and thank him for joining us. Madam Chair, thank you very much. And thanks to all of the Tarrant County Democrats there. Um, yes, I had my start in Tarrant County. Yes. And uh, the fact is this, I had Tim Carey, a former assistant district attorney, uh, district attorney there, hired me, I would still be in Tarrant County because the first <laughs> job interview that I had coming back to North Central Texas was in uh, Tarrant County, in the Tarrant County District Attorney's Office. I was interviewed that morning by Tim Carey. He said, well, I'll get back with you. I was interviewed that afternoon by Henry Wade. He offered me a job. And so I ended up in Dallas. That's, well, we that's lost funny. you if I, because of a phone call. So <laughs> Leah Dean, I'm going to let you take it away. Great. Thanks, Deborah. Uh, thank you, Senator, for joining us. We are really excited to have you here. 
I want to start off because I feel like it's important. We know that COVID-19 obviously um, has been detrimental in multiple ways. But something that I think that we need to talk about first and foremost is the um, murders, I'm going to use that word, of Ahmaud Arbery and of uh, Bree Taylor. COVID-19 has brought a lot of healthcare issues, a lot of other things to light, but the absolute hate crimes that we're seeing during this time that we are not um, getting the proper notification of, that we are not seeing the proper media coverage on, and we're not seeing justice on. So Senator, I would like to start with talking about um, racism in America and what you will do as the next US Senator to protect people of color, communities of color, uh, from this hate and racism that we're currently experiencing? Well, I, I think that it's real important. Thank you for the question, first of all. And let me say this also. I want to thank Tarrant County for voting for me in the primary. And I was number one in Tarrant County in the primary, so I do appreciate that. Uh, in terms of the question, I can recall, let me give you a little context. Uh, we had to fight hate crimes in Tarrant County when an African-American male was just sitting on his car in front of his house and he shot to death by an angle. I was a part of that. I was a part of the march to Tarrant County Courthouse. And needless to say, we invited persons from Tarrant County to come down to the state capitol to testify in favor of the hate crimes bill. And so I have a long history in, in this particular area. This is what, I, this is what needs to happen, Liam. Elections have consequences. We've got to make certain the NAACP Legal Defense Fund has a project where it's trying to make certain that around this country that we elect fair prosecutors. And that's where the decisions are made in terms of obviously prosecuting someone for a state crime. And obviously we have federal hate crimes also on the books. But some states don't have hate crimes. We're fortunate to have one in Texas because people in Tarrant County and across the state fought for it and we were able to get it done here in the state of Texas. But what has to happen is that we've got to make certain that we champion the election of fair prosecutors. We've got to continue to make certain that when we see instances of discrimination, of racism, that we, we point them out to our persons and we make certain it stays on the front burner and that it doesn't get lost on the back page of these newspapers. And those are some of the things that we need to do. Thank you, Senator. Um, I think that you know social media has been kind of a tool to to bring these things to light, and right. I just wanted to make sure that we started off um, definitely um, lifting up Ahmad Arbery and, and Bree Taylor's names, and and there are so many more. We could sit here for the rest of the hour and and talk about the names that have uh, absolutely just been injusticed um, across this country. So thank you for for your answer on that. Well, let me, just, let, me, let, me, let me just say this too. You know, it seems though every summer here lately, we go through these types of situations, okay? And in terms of hate crimes, one of the things that I did was make certain we had the body camera law here in Texas. And here's the deal. I would hope that every state had body camera laws, but in Dallas County, there was a police officer that shot a young 14-year-old African-American as he was going away from a party. He was indicted for murder. He was convicted of murder. And the jury said after sentencing him to 10 years in prison, that it was the body camera footage that helped them to make the decision in that particular case. And so we need to make certain that we have body cameras throughout this entire country to give the finder of fact additional information to make a decision on what actually occurs in these types of situations. The other thing is, and let me just say this, we've got to make certain that as it relates to releasing the body cam footage, that has historically been an issue, but I took the leadership role when we were down at Purdue View A&M University and a young lady ended up dying in jail. You remember that. And I was able to get the Department of Public Safety to release the body camera footage, obviously with the parents' consent. 
And that was one of the first times that happened in the country. Well, um, obviously, thank you for all that you've done for the great state of Texas. Um, I am fortunate to be your neighbor over here in Fort Worth. Um, but I want to stay on communities of color and I want to talk about uh, immigrations and, and dreamers. And that's something that, you know, it's the media seems to keep moving on. Something new keeps happening. But the border is still an issue. There are still children in cages. This is something that we need to talk about. And I would love to hear your plan as the next US Senator of, uh, of what you will do to protect asylum seekers at the border and these children in cages that who knows what's happening to them currently uh, and the injustices that, that, that they're going through. So I'd love to hear more about uh, your immigration reform policies and what you plan to do for the communities of color at the border. Well, let's, talk, let's, talk, let's talk about the entire issue. We've got to have comprehensive immigration reform. That's easy to say, isn't it? Everybody says that, as opposed to these executive orders. One thing's for certain, we've got to make certain that we pass a law that prohibits the executive branch of government for putting kids in cages. Never before in my lifetime have we ever had a president that is such a bully, that's mean, that will use any device that he has at his disposal in order to accomplish a political goal. He has no sense of morality. How in the world could you allow people that report to you to put kids in cages? We've got to remember that we saw one child, a teenager, who was sick and they wouldn't give him medical help and he died while well, confined. And you know, that's that's the one we saw the media picked up on. You know there were other instances of that. So we gotta make certain, number one, that that never happens again in America. We know under Joe Biden that that's not going to happen. In terms of asylum seekers, we've gotta put in place, and for the life of me, I don't understand why can we, can't, we can't put in place a, 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 a judicial system, administrative system that can timely hear these asylum claims and act upon them. It doesn't seem to me that it would take a genius to figure that out. And so we, that's what we need to do. We don't need a wall, okay? What we need is to make certain that we deploy the necessary technology on the border in order to make certain we keep it safe. I do wanna make certain our borders are safe, whether it's in the Southern sector or the Northern sector. We need to make certain that we, pro we provide the necessary resources in order to get uh, those things done where our borders can in fact be safe. You touched on something that I'd like to kind of segue into, which is healthcare. Uh, we have a question from uh, from one of our watchers and also a question that I have prepared. Uh, Sonia, you and I are on the same page today. And that's talking about uh, healthcare and access in this country. I grew up without health insurance. Um, my parents were self-employed and that's something I didn't get till I was 22. And that's something I know a lot of people in this country are um, are dealing with. So I would love to talk more about the Affordable Care Act and um, Medicare for All. Tell us your stance on access to um, affordable health care or potentially free health care. I, you know, I think that we, we have to have, uh, health care should be a fundamental right, okay? And I know that there are a lot of proponents for uh, Medicare for All. You know, I think that's very aspirational, but we've got to make certain that we can quote unquote afford to, to do it. And so to the extent that we come up with some uh, fiscally sound plans to be able to do that, I think aspirationally that I'd be able to support that. Right now, I'm supportive of making certain that we take the Affordable Care Act and we fix it. I don't have a problem with a public choice. I mean, a public option. We need to make certain we do that. We've got to make certain also, Leah, that those persons that have health care plans that want to hold on to those health care plans, that they're able to do that. And we should be able to get that done. The question becomes is whether or not it's going to be a priority for Congress. And see, here's the other piece. When you begin to think about Texas and other states with the 36 million people that we now know are unemployed in this country, how many of them lost their insurance? How will we take care of them? We need to make certain that we have a safety net for them. And that should be the Affordable Care Act at this point. It should also fuel 
our desire to have a healthcare system where persons like that won't, persons, no fault of their own, they've lost their job or they've been on a furlough as a result of the, uh, the, the virus, that they should be able to have insurance for themselves and their families. And so hopefully that has fueled the desire by Democrats and Republicans to get this health care issue done because there's going to be a lot of different things we're going to have to deal with coming out of this COVID situation on the, on the local level, the state level, and also the national level. Completely agree. And talking on health care, um, for those who don't know your record uh, for women's health care and women's choice, I'd love to talk about that. Uh, in the past, President Carter has suggested that Democrats should abandon abortion as a major issue. Um, and as a women's rights champion, I would love to hear more about your plan for safe uh, and accessible access for all in, in this country um, to the health care that, that they need, especially whenever it comes to women's planning? Uh, you know, women should have a right to make her own decision about what her health care needs are going to be and how she's going to provide, how she's going to take care of her health care needs. I've always been an advocate of it, and I continue to be an advocate of it. You've got to understand that the Texas Democratic Women, which you know a little bit about that organization, I was one of the first recipients of their Oscar Mazi Award, okay? And for those who don't know what the Oscar Mazi Award is, I, I know you can tell them, Leah, but the fact is, it's for a legislator that's gone beyond the call of duty in order to make certain that he was an advocate for women's rights. That's my history. When Wendy Davis did the filibuster on the floor of the state senate, who was one of the uh, lieutenants on the, uh, one of the leaders on the floor to make certain that Republicans couldn't knock her off the floor, Royce West was. Who was the person who called time when uh, Republicans was trying to stop her filibuster? It was Royce West. In front of thousands of women who were there to make certain that their rights weren't abridged by Republicans. Royce West stood up then, and I, I'm standing up now, and I'll stand up as your United States Senator. If you, and I know that I have not received the endorsement of uh, a lot of women groups, but the fact is this, if you ask Wendy Davis, about Royce West and his issue on women's, his record on women's issues, she'll give you an A for Royce West. If you ask Cecile Richards, who's the head of Planned Parenthood, who I work with, she'll also let you know what Royce West's record is and she'll give me an A. You ask the Freedom Network about Royce West and they also tell you that many times no one else would sponsor their events in Austin, but Royce West would. And I'll continue to do that as the United States Senator. I tell you, you talking about um, that filibuster, I just got chills. I was sitting on this couch in Midland uh, on my laptop watching the live stream of that. It's it's an evening I'll never forget personally. Uh, and it was shortly after that that I, I told myself and my mom, I love you, but I'm moving to DFW. <laughs> oh, I, thought you, I thought you were saying you love me. I'm, okay. I'm, <laughs> well, yeah. of course. Um, okay. So speaking of, of what you've done in the past and in, in deciding to run for office, that's a big step. And, and you've you know had a great career as, as a politician, as a state senator here in Texas. But talk about your decision to run for U.S. Senate. I'd love to hear more about that. Well, I mean, the reason I decided to run is because it's time that we have another voice that's uh, frankly consistent with new values in the state of Texas. You know, for the life of me, I don't understand why John Corning still hadn't gotten it. I don't know, what, know why John Corning has been complicit with Donald Trump every step of the way. You know, I, I've been knowing John Corning ever since he was the Attorney General of the state of Texas and carried legislation to help him with child support related that, uh, issues that we agreed upon. But he's changed. You know, for some reason, he doesn't understand the changing demographics of the state and the values that he now need to reflect in terms of his policies of the border issue. Yes, everybody believes that we need to have strong borders, but we can do it with more compassion that's been, than it's been done with. Uh, criminal justice issues, issues concerning health care. This man has voted against the Affordable Care Act 20 times, but yet still his state leads the nation in the number of uninsured. He doesn't understand or appreciate the position that this state is in, and he is not doing anything to help the least of these. And so Leo, you asked me why am I running? I wanted to make certain 
that yes, there'll be lobbyists that will lobby me to do 50 million different things. But the reality is this, those persons, those 2 million plus Texans that are unemployed, they need someone to look out for their interests. Royce West is gonna look out for their interests. Those persons right now that are facing eviction need someone to look out for their interests. Those persons in rural and also urban Texas that don't have access to Wi-Fi because of broadband and 5G issues, they need someone that's gonna look out for their interests. And Royce West is going to do that. You're right. I don't have to do this. I'm still, I'll still be a state senator, but I'm doing it because it's time to turn Texas blue. Beto O'Rourke did a great job helping to start it. Frankly, back in 2006 in Dallas County, I helped start turning Dallas County blue and now it's deep blue. And we have great leaders over there, but it's time to turn Texas blue. Tarrant County must be a part of helping us turn Texas blue. Here's the deal, my friends. Once I win as your US Senator, we'll end up making certain that Joe Biden wins. That's 38 electoral college votes. You know what that means on a national basis. We can get rid of Betsy DeVos, the Secretary of Education, who's trying to privatize our education system. And I'm gonna stand up to those types of things, Leah, when I become your next United States Senator. Thank you for that. I know that uh, Deborah, has a, a big plan with TCDP and, and we're all working hard over here. So uh, we look forward to turning Tarrant County and Texas blue. Because if Tarrant County goes blue, we all know what happens after that. Everybody goes blue. <laughs> if Tarrant can do it, everybody can do it. That's I'm right. talking to you, Midland County. Um, so we've talked about healthcare. We've talked about women's rights. We've talked about um, the, the racism issue that we're having in, in the hate crimes here in, in Texas and across our nation. Um, I'd like to talk a little bit about gun reform. Okay. Uh, we had um, a shooting in, in Tarrant County a few days ago, um, and gun reform is needed, in my personal opinion. And I would love to hear uh, what your thoughts are about banning assault uh, rifles and weapons and, and what you have done in Texas and what you plan to do uh, as a U.S. Senator to make sure that we are all safe. Okay, my record in this area is real clear. Um, I was the first senator to file a bill to ban assault weapons when Ann Richards was governor of the state of Texas. Filed a bill of a ban assault weapons, a universal background checks, and reduction of the size of magazines, and I'm in favor of red flag laws. We, we begin to see because of the carnage that we've seen across this country. Texas being ground zero for part of that carnage. Look what happened in El Paso, Santa Fe, and I can go on and on in terms of other cities and schools here in Texas. Yes, people have a Second Amendment right to bear arms, but I firmly believe that we can maintain the intent of the Second Amendment and also make certain that we're banning assault type weapons that people should not be having using to do any hunting, or to be able to have on the streets. I've been very consistent about that issue and others across the country are now, have now begun to speak with a louder voice where I believe that if we flip the Senate that we're gonna be able to get legislation across this country to deal with the issue of assault weapons, universal background checks, size of magazines, red flag laws. I firmly believe that. Um, there are issues concerning schools. Should rural communities, and I voted for this, I want you to know this. Should rural communities have an option as it relates to school districts to determine how they secure their schools? I think they should. They should be able to make those decisions because I believe fundamentally that, listen to me very closely, government closest to the people is best for the people. So if you have an issue and Fort Worth concerning your school district. You should be able to vote those persons out that you have uh, concerns about. And so we need to make sure we're able to do that. And so my record is second to none as it relates to making certain that we have gun sense legislation in this country. Thank you. And speaking on education, 
Um, I had the pleasure of meeting Ted Cruz a couple of years ago here in Tarrant County, the day of the Betsy DeVos vote. Uh, and we all begged and pleaded him to, uh, to vote against uh, having Betsy as our, uh, as well, voting for Betsy in general, because that's just a disaster as we've seen. Um, and coming from a rural community, we don't have schools of choice. We don't have voucher options. I would love to hear um, your record on public education and what you will do to continue to save public education. Thank you for that question. The fact is, is that I've served on the public education committee for a number of years. Um, I've served at the highest position I had three, uh, that I was on the education committee was the vice chair because Republicans have always pretty much controlled the legislature. Uh, when you begin to look at uh, HB3, which was uh, frankly historic legislation that was passed this past legislative session, you can see Democrats' fingerprints all over that legislation. And I was one of the leaders in terms of uh, concepts that we put in there, policy concepts that we put in there. Issues concerning uh, teacher pay increases. I was there to make certain that monies were put in place to give teachers and other educational officials a pay raise. Issues concerning uh, schools uh, that were underperforming, making certain that we uh, had monies going to those schools to that followed the kids to those schools to make sure those schools had the resources, regardless of what the school districts were saying, in order to do the things that need to do in order to turn around those schools. Uh, when you begin to look at issues concerning uh, kids going on to college, I made certain that if a child it takes a, an advanced placement course, and for some reason they score three or above, we need to make certain that that student is able to get college credit towards a terminal degree those types of things. Trying to make certain that we address the issue of the cost of education in the state. The fact is, I led the effort to make certain that if a, if a student goes from high school to community college and they take a course that's aligned with a terminal degree or a degree at a university, sometimes what's happened is that that student takes that course and then they end up going to a university and the university says, no, 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 you've got to take that course again. Well, I'll put a stop to that. And now that will help students know the courses that they're taking. If they take a course in community college, that course will be acceptable in a university. That's those types of things. But you begin to think about just public education in general. I have a background on making certain that kids, uh, what has historically happened, Leah, is that some kids, because of their ethnicity, because of where they're located, what school district they go to, could not be uh, accepted in the top university, public universities in the state. It was Royce West working with other legislators that put in place the top 10% rule. Where the student finishes in the top 10%, regardless of what school district, that student is able to go to any state university in the state of Texas. That law is still on the books. It's been watered down a little bit by UT, but that law is still on the books, and I have been the guardian of that law in the state senate. Well, don't hold it against him, but my sweet husband went to A&M. And uh, that being said, we have a lot of student debt. He, uh, you know, has a payment of close to what our mortgage is a month. Uh, it's, mm -hmm. you know, it, it, it's crippling for some people. And he got scholarships and he had good grades and he was fortunate to get into his college of choice. Um, but it's crippling for a lot of people. I did not go to college because I knew my family could not assume the debt. And I knew that I didn't want to be burdened with that. We all have to make those choices. So I would love to hear your plan about student loan forgiveness and what the cost of education will look like uh, underneath you as a US Senator. Well, what, what the cost of education will look like for me is that we need to revamp our public school system to make certain that we not only do 12 years of public education, that we do 14 years of paid public education, allowing students to go to community college or, vac or a vocational program. And it's paid for by the federal government, a combination of the federal government and also state government. And so I think we need to do that. In terms of, in, in terms of um, loan forgiveness, I think we need to revamp the loan forgiveness program uh, Joe Biden has come up with some great concepts that I'm studying. And a couple of those concepts is basically, if for some reason someone makes under $25,000, then 
uh, that year that, that they don't have to pay that student loan back, which makes a lot of sense. You make up $25,000, you can't afford to pay it back. But you graduate, you've graduated anyway, but you're only making 25,000. And anybody over 25,000, uh, the concept is, is that um, you would only have to pay 5% of your disposable income over $25,000 of your discretionary income over $25,000 in order to, uh, to, towards your student loan. And after 20 years, whatever the balance is that's left over, it would end up being forgiven. And it would not, that forgiveness would not be of tax consequences to you on your income tax. There's another uh, provision that, that Joe's talking about is that any student making over under $125,000 a year that they would look at loan forgiveness. Period. You know, student loan debt is now like $1.7 trillion. It's a big issue for many generations. And we've got to make certain that we address it. I look forward to making certain it's one of my priorities as it relates to education. Thank you for that. Our household definitely would uh, would be able to do a lot more if we didn't have that $700 a month payment. <laughs> I understand. I do understand. <laughs> um, the next thing I'd like to talk to you, because uh, I went to a trade school. That's something I didn't want to go to college. I didn't want to have that burden. So I went to a trade school and trade schools, I feel are really important. And a lot of uh, you know schools are able in the metro areas to have cosmetology on site. You can learn about HVAC units, things along those lines. Other communities, not so much, not where I went to school. Um, but I would love to talk about the, our labor force and um, pro-worker legislation. We've seen some strikes this year, uh, and we know that that labor is hurting and, and they need our help. So I would love to know more about what you've done in the past uh, to support labor and what you'll be doing as our U.S. Senator to support labor. Well, you know, uh, and I have supported labor. The fact of the matter is CWA has endorsed me, AFL-CIO has endorsed me. Uh, and several other unions have endorsed me. The American Federation of Teachers have endorsed me. And it's because of my record. When you begin to think about, there have been Republicans have attempted to take away uh, rights from unions as it relates to um, allowing, uh, as state employees, as an example, to uh, check off a box to allow monies coming from their check to go to pay for union dues. Fact is, is that Republicans have attempted to take it away. And then what they've done in the process is try to divide law enforcement from the regular unions in order to try to get the votes to take away that particular right. And when you begin to think about issues concerning their ability, you know, we, we, we're a right to work state. That's what we are. But there have been some attacks on the abilities of unions to be able to negotiate. And we've been very insistent that they be allowed to do that. And so when you look at my record, what you'll see is a person that has the support of AFL-CIO and other unions in the state. And the reason they're supporting me because they know that I've got their back. When I go to Congress, when we have issues concerning treaties, I'm gonna make certain that union representatives are sitting at my table as I go through my decision-making process. They will always have input into decisions that I make in Washington as they've had the input and the decisions I've made in Texas. Speaking of some decisions that you've made, uh, I know Deborah has mentioned that you had a little bit of influence at bringing a law school to North Texas. I'd love to hear more about that. Well, I, I tell you what, the, the first influence that I had was bringing some school over in Fort Worth uh, that started off as Texas Western School of Law, okay? Oh, DF, it, was, it was DFW School of Law, and I think it was named Texas Western in effect. Uh, Chris Harris, who was a senator in uh, Arlington, uh, took the lead and I helped him to make certain that we got legislation that was passed in order to create that law school over in Fort Worth. That was the first one. And then I wanted to make certain that Dallas, believe this or not, Dallas didn't have a public university. The city of Dallas, the ninth largest city in the country, did not have a public university. And so I, I went on a, I went on a uh, odyssey, a political odyssey in order to pull together the people that were necessary, Democrats and Republicans, in order to get a public university in Dallas. Now we have the University of North Texas uh, at Dallas, and you know, over 4,000 students. Didn't stop there. I wanted to also make certain we had a public university 
And so what I was able to do was to get the legislature to approve the second university. At the time, Westland was private. Now that's Texas a and I, I know that. Um, but we now have two public law schools in Dallas, Fort Worth, and I've had the ability, I've, I've had a role in each one of those law schools. Well, thank you for uh, always boosting up the DFW area. We're very appreciative of all that you've done. Um, and I would like to kind of wrap this up. We're looking at, um, I've had some great questions, but I would love to hear a wrap up from you. We know that campaigning in the time of COVID-19 is difficult and different and new and there's trial and error. I know you've been on four Zoom calls and you have another one after this, um, <laughs> but I would love to hear uh, how, how the campaign has been for you and, and just kind of giving us a wrap up of, uh, of you as a U.S. Senator and, and why we should vote for you. Thank you very much, Leah. Thank you very much, Deborah and other Democrats in Tarrant County. I'm a true Democrat. I've readied myself for this opportunity to represent you in the United States Senate. I have a history of bringing the people together based on interests and then getting the job done. When you begin to look at my resume, you'll see the experiences that I've had in positions that I've taken. And I think you will agree with most of them. I think that you've also got to look at the references that I have. You've got to remember that there were 12 persons, actually 11 people running for United States Senate. Senator. Of those persons, most of them have endorsed me. Christina Ramirez, she endorsed Royce West. Chris Bell, Royce West. Michael Cooper, Royce West. Amanda Edwards, Royce West. So you see that those persons represent Tarrant County, over 850,000 votes. And when you put mine in there that I received, that's over a million votes of persons that support Royce West, or, or, or that persons that represent individuals that support Royce West. And I'm hoping that we'll be able to get them to do the things necessary to remind persons of why they are supporting me. And they're supporting me because I represent interests that aligns with their viewpoints. We need to think about Tarrant County. Nicole Cowley supports Royce West. Beverly Powell, Royce West. Chris Turner, just to name a few, Royce West. Roy Brooks, most of the Democrats in Tarrant County support me, not because I'm good looking or anything like that, but they know what type of work that I can do that I'm the only true Democrat in this race. Forward Star Telegram endorsed Royce West. The Dallas Morning News endorsed Royce West. The Houston Chronicle endorsed me. I've, I have been involved in the Democratic Party and I'm committed to the Democratic Party. I have voted Democratic ever since I could vote. My involvement has been with helping people run for office and win. My commitment has been serving on the State Democratic Executive Committee and on the DNC Executive Committee. And so the question is, is whether or not you want a true Democrat that has paid their dues to the Democratic Party to be your next United States Senator. The question is, is whether you want someone that has demonstrated that they're not afraid to fight when it's time to fight for our democratic principles. And so I'm hoping that you will do as you did in the primary and be supportive of my candidacy, but make certain that I have some extra room in terms of support when you go to the polls or vote by mail on July 14th. Thank you very much. Well, we are so thankful that you joined us today. Um, for those who are, are watching, uh, you can see in the chat, you can go to RoyceWest.com. He's on the Facebook page. Check out his website. Deborah knows that I don't leave anything without a selfie. I've got my phone ready. Royce, you yes. just smile and we'll get this let's, done. Let's get do this. Okay. Here. All right. All right. Here we go, everybody. One, two, three. Royce West. There we go. Got to do it. Got to do it. Well, thank you so much for joining us. Um, we are so thankful to have you not only as our state senator, um, but as a candidate, 
I think that that the slate of candidates that, that we've seen, I know I got to moderate a debate uh, a few months ago before the primary yes. Uh, yes. here at, at UNTL Science Center with the Catown Democrats. And, and it was so nice to meet you in person. And, uh, and I look forward to hearing more from you on more Zoom calls. Deborah, got anything you want to wrap up with? Well, I just want to remind everybody that um, early voting now starts uh, June the 29th. I had to think, okay, they've changed. So early voting starts. Uh, you can right now, uh, the appeals court just upheld a ruling on vote by mail that it should stand, but it is still being appealed. So if you are six no. years older, uh, oh, go ahead, Senator. Were you going to say something? No, no, I hadn't heard that yet. Okay. The appeals court upheld. Oh, yeah. Good. Yeah, they have ruled today that it would stand, but it's still being appealed. So sure. uh, we are urging anybody who is eligible under the current rules to apply for an application to vote by mail. Okay. So for those of you who are 65 and older, or if you're going to be out of town on election day, if you have a disability, or if you know someone who's incarcerated, but otherwise eligible to vote, uh, there are applications that you can get to vote by mail. And so we are encouraging you to do that. But if you have to go vote in person, you can now start voting on, um, I think it's June the 29th, and you can, uh, we still in Tarrant County, Senator, uh, I fought to get countywide voting. You know that yes. countywide voting. Uh, we still have 191 voting locations. We plan to keep them all uh, for the um, runoff uh, because we want as many people to get out to vote as possible. And so I urge you, if you can vote by mail, please go ahead and get your application. If not, let's vote early so that we can elect Democrats up and down this ballot. Okay. All right. Heather, I know that. So as a reminder, uh, your friends from the Tarrant County Democratic Party are going to be giving away uh, two restaurant gift cards. They do take out, okay, in this age of COVID. <laughs> But I just want to let you know, as chair of the Terra County Democratic Party, you know that I have made it a practice not to endorse. But I will tell you that when I ran for mayor, Royce West was with me. And we have been friends for, I'm not even going to tell you how long. <laughs> just, just know my hair is gray. And so he is an extraordinary friend Tarrant County. He's been a great friend to the Tarrant County Democratic Party. And so I just want to thank you so much for joining us this evening, because it's just uh, your participation is critical. So thank you. Thank you very much. Hey, God bless each and every one of you. I'm okay. getting ready to zoom off to another meeting now. Okay, Zoom. Senator. Thank you, Senator. Bye -bye. Thank you, Deborah. Bye-bye. Bye, -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye, -bye. everybody. Okay, I have, I, I'm the, the uh, voice in the sky again, just to remind you, if you did not register, uh, we actually have two restaurant gift cards that were, I think it's Applebee's, right? So okay. doesn't love Applebee's. <laughs> um, so if you registered, make sure you registered via the Mobilize America link. Um, if not, send in, just send an email to me, info at tarrantdemocrats.org, and then we'll do a drawing for those gift cards. So. Uh, Deborah, I'm signing off. I'll be closing out this meeting. Okay. Lastly, check out our uh, website, tarrantdemocrats.org. Um, you know, definitely subscribe to the newsletter. It's tarrantdemocrats.org forward slash subscribe. That's the best way for you to hear the new town halls that will be coming up, as well as any events that your Tarrant County Democratic Party uh, will be hosting uh, for you. Uh, next week, Thursday, May 21st at 5 p.m., We'll be meeting with our chair for our election judge recruitment committee, uh, Vera Roberts, as well as Texas Democratic Party um, voter protection director, Ro Rosemary Clauston. Um, we will be talking about the need for election judges. We have a huge need um, during the time for, of COVID-19. We're gonna need a lot more election judges um, for the July primary runoff, as well as the November election. So that's definitely a town hall you don't want to miss. All right. Bye-bye. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks, Deborah. Thanks, Deborah. Okay. Thank you.